Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from... Story number one, Awful, written by Stumpy Jim. It is truly astounding that you survived, Zad. Yanu cheered as he smacked the back of his friend. And on a death will at that, truly all the females will find you attractive. Zad scratched his snout and bristled the air. But then the human I was with, Magnus, uh, was the reason I survived. Deathwild is sure are strong and tough, so I'm not surprised. But then you still managed to survive, despite it. So that is amazing. Yanu supped his trick, then rubbed his bumpy ears. What was the worst part? Zad let out a heavy sigh as a sour expression came to his face. He even gagged. What is it? Sorry, uh, uh, j just remembering something. Yano's tail flicked up and swayed. Now I really want to know. All right. Zad took a deep breath, then tapped the counter. All right. So after a few months on the Death Wolf, we entered a season known for the humans as, uh, winter. A horrible change to the hellish world where water freezes. The thing called snow. Frozen lakes fall from the sky. Plants seem to die, losing all the green leaves. Grass buried in a thick sheet of snow that can sap out all the warmth from your body. Every other living animal seems to just disappear from the world. The only respite from those deadly carnivals and herbivores, only to realize that they do it because the winter is so deadly. Winter reminds me of space, that immense stillness, how cold it can seem, empty. Only there's a sort of strange beauty to it. What happened? The winter is a deadly season. For not only can you freeze to death, you can even kill yourself by eating snow unmelted, apparently. Really? Yanu twitched his nose. How? Lowers your body temperature. Oh. But Magnus was smart, so he knew what to do. We never reached the point because we found us a shelter to keep us from the cold, since night is even colder than the day. Was that the worst part? No. But there is an issue during winter that humans faced on their world, and that's the issue of food. Because every animal is gone, right? Exactly. Zad nodded, taking another sip of his drink. But they learned to figure it out. What did you eat then? When Magnus found us a cave, we were lucky to find that it was already occupied by several animals. How is that lucky? Aren't death world animals all killers that would maul you to death? Yes, but they were all asleep, so they couldn't do anything to us. Zad nodded and leaned back on his stool. Magnus was pretty efficient at getting them with his knife. One or two cuts, then they were dead. Yanu gulped. How big were they? Massive. Zad gestured his arms as wide as he could. Larger than a human, like five to ten times over. Humans are scary. Was that the worst part? Zad shook his head. Not even close. Then get on with it. Right. So Magnus then started using his knife to cut the animals, skinning them, removing the fur and setting it aside. He then cut up each animal into pieces, separating fat from meat. It was truly amazing to see how much meat a human could eat of an animal. How much? To the bone. Then use the bones for the marrow and for a broth. Really? Wow. That's not the half of it. Nanu gasped. What? They use more than that? Yes. Magnus even set the organs aside to use. Organs? Nanu gagged. Disgusting. Yeah. But apparently nutrient dense, Magnus told me. Yanu paused for a moment and shook his head, taking a deep breath. That does sound horrible. Yeah, but the worst part was yet to come. There's more? Yes. Well, go on then. After he finished dressing the animals, that was what he called it, he took a bucket of melted snow water and began to clean the intestines. What? Yanu gagged and nearly threw up. They don't eat that, do they? Zad grimaced. They do. He managed to clean it out fully, emptying out all the gunk into a bucket. Magnus prepped all the meat into rations with fire he built and managed to sustain throughout the entire season. We ate all of it, even the horrible intestines. That's disgusting. Yeah. Zad drank deeply and cringed at the memory. Even the humans ate it. That's why they call it the offal, because it is awful. End of story. Story number two, On Foxholes and Theology, written by Warp Mind. Gonthara Battlefield, After Action Inspection. General Rogan looked out on the battlefield. While he'd expected the battle to be bloody, 
He'd not expected this sort of mess. Bad enough that the brigade had been assigned to assist in the civil war on an alien world, but the defenders had some sort of obscenely overpowered electromagnetic pulse weapons. Despite any attempts to shield electronics, ground or air vehicles were swiftly targeted and disabled. The circuitry toasted on the spot. How? Better than half the time the soldiers showed up the battlefield and immediately dropped half their gear due to malfunctions. At the very least, the rifles were unaffected, but the night vision scopes were largely useless, and wireless comms were a pipe dream. He shook his head and returned his focus to the present, gazing over the honest-to-God trenches and foxholes that scarred the ground, quickly addressing his aide. So, we finally took the site. Intel said that this was some sort of religious site that the rebels had taken over. Captain Creed slowly removed his hat and scratched his head. Yes, apparently, the place is a holy site, where those seeking their god's guidance will find it, whatever it might be. The rebels intended to gain divine aid to instill theocracy in place of a republic that governs the continent. I can't say I've noticed anything out of the ordinary, personally, but... General Rogan nodded. Give me a summary of the reports, then. Captain Creed looked at the archaic clipboard and flipped through the first few pages. Right. So we dug in eight days ago, or a week by local calendar. Once the first reports of EM weaponry disabling our armored vehicles, drones, and aircraft came back. Fortunately, humanity's got a long history of trench warfare, even if it is, uh, it fell out of style in the 20th century. So, if you'll pardon the pun, digging up in old methods was easier than we feared. Rogan sighed. Then eyes, Captain, but go on. Creed grinned wryly. The rebels were well bunkered around the holy site, per central point, so it took six days to burrow our way even closer, mostly in the cover of night. Overland chargers were out of the question, as there was no way that we could expect anyone to make it all the way to the fortifications in one piece until we'd essentially dug our way underneath the structures. Then two days ago, something uh, happened. Rogan arched an eyebrow. The tone of voice was unusual for his normally calm aide to come. Something? Creed frowned at the reports. Some of the soldiers at the front of the trench started exhibiting anomalous behavior, sir. The night was moonless. Reports have described it as remarkably dark blue. And several soldiers seemed to have experienced something that resembled uh, ecstasy. Drugs? No, sir. Religious ecstasy. The strange thing is, all soldiers who this happened to, and only the affected soldiers, are registered as atheists in the enlistment papers. Rogan frowned. So all the atheists uh, experienced something? Yes, sir. And before the sun rose, they'd grabbed assorted melee weapons, knives, ropes, makeshift clubs, pretty much anything except their firearms, and charged up over the trenches and straight into the fortifications. By reports from our own side, they did so quietly, with the sort of menacing inevitability to them, even. That's unsettling, so... They breached the fortifications. Night lightning, sir. Seventy-three soldiers somehow slipped into the enemy stronghold and methodically stabbed, strangled, or bludgeoned every single adult to death, with neither hesitation nor remorse. Rogan's eye twitched. Why did you specify every adult like that? Creed scratched his cheek. Well, sir, there were seventeen children, offspring of some of the rebels, present, and the soldiers gently gathered them up and carried them out and to a safe location off the battlefield, where they are now taking care of them until all living relatives can be found. We're honestly not quite sure about what to do with the afflicted troops, though. So, uh, what do you think happened? Creed shook his head. Sir, there is an old saying. There is no atheists in a foxhole. It seems that these atheists found, or rather, they were found by Kali. General Rogan looked out of the battlefield once more, the trenches scarring the land, and the broken fortifications, carefully covered stretches, were carried outside for burial. I think, uh, I think we should give the 73 a medal, nominate them for medals of valor, and uh, honorably discharge them, citing moral conflicts and religious exemptions. Creed's brow furrowed. Sir? General Rogan shook his head. We can get away with it this once, I think. But there is no way knowingly having a whole company of Kali worshippers is not a war crime of some sort. 
End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.